the co- Whoa. There he is. There I am. Live from the 415, right? All right. No. Five, four, oh, Give us the Radio Ethan speech that you would have given in that practice. Oh, man. I don't, can't. I don't know if I should do that. I got my, my, my wife has a day off from work. She's taking a little nap. I don't know if she needs – I'm a little worried about her seeing the side of me, quite frankly, guys. I'm a little bit worried. What side? <laughs> The radio, the radio side. The side, the side that's actually the most likable side of you. Is that what you're saying? That side you don't want anyone to see. That side. I don't want her to see the monster within me. I don't want her to know about the guy who is third in ratings in the general vicinity of Concord, California. I don't want her knowing about that. That's a monster. That's a monster. But look, brothers, I'm okay with being that monster because I'm a monster for you. Because you need the truth. You can't let these guys get off the hook when they have a bad game or when they're playing badly. You need someone like me to stand up for the little guy in his car during drive time and give it to them straight. And what I'm telling you right now is that Doc Rivers is Doc Crivers. He's Crivers. <laughs> Cry me a river. With it. He tries to say it's the media. It's the media. Oh, it was me. I'm sorry. Look, bro, you're playing your son and he's garbage. How about that? How about you do that? How about you get that in order? How about you do that? Instead of worrying about what the media is saying, brother. Uh, now, Radio Ethan from the Sherwood and Strauss show, uh, there have been some some talk from this uh, rival radio show, mm-hmm. uh, Bino and Mark. I don't know if you've heard their, their show. Bino and Mark. Okay. Great show. Yeah. yeah. Springfield's they, finest. They, it's they, the NBA Hall of Fame yeah, you know, or the Basketball Hall of Fame. I haven't listened to that show because I have ears and they're precious to me. <laughs> I wouldn't waste on that. Okay? What'd they say, though? They called you a hack. They said you're a little bit of a hack, and they they, they supported J- – actually, they're having J.J. Reddick Day where they're passing out T-shirts with J.J. Reddick in, like, a speech bubble, and it says, was it Ethan, that little – you know, and you know the rest. Yeah, 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 you know what, J.J., uh, uh, maybe stick to poetry. Yeah, yeah. Did anybody know, notice that? Did anybody know about that, that, that J.J. Reddick does poetry, that he's a big poet? I think one of his lines was, I like to soar like a condor. How about you soar like a condor away from my face, JJ? I don't want to hear it. You know, I, maybe you have some Duke highlights. I'll watch that. Not you in the NBA. You're not a star. Get out of my face. I'm a star. I'm a star in this market. When you get on my level, when you're a superstar, when you get your own shoe contract, maybe then you can dare mention my name. But until that point, you shut up, JJ Reddick. I do not want to hear it. They said you only – Fignosterism apparently also heard the Bino and, and Mark show say that you only have your show because you're lucky you don't have to compete with them. You know what? <laughs> I plead guilty. Guilty. I'm lucky. I'm lucky to be me. I'm lucky to be, I'm lucky to be this great, this fantastic, to have this melodious of voice, everybody. Yes, it's a gift. Guilty is charged. Next question. <laughs> uh, How much what... coffee have you drank today? <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know what? You know what? I had a late earlier today. That's right. I don't call it a latte because I'm an American. I'm not some sort of French person. <laughs> Please, so let's, let's open up to the phone lines. Please uh, go ahead and submit your questions for Radio Ethan as he gives us hot takes about anything around the league, anything you guys have. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pick one from... Matthew Bow, Matthew Bow, M. Bow, 1982 says, does anyone know how in the world Byron, Co- Byron Scott is still coaching? Oh, uh, because uh, he really- played the game. How about that? Maybe don't question him. Maybe he knows something you don't know, you know, <laughs> that it's easier to shoot a two-point shot. Hey, hey, I mean, is it easier to score a two-point shot or is it easier to score a three-point shot? <laughs> Answer the question. Which one's easier? Depends on what kind of two-point no, no, shot. No, 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 Answer the question. Which percentage is better? I mean, I, I would take, I guess, uh, uh, a, lay, a layup, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a two-point shot. It's easy. <laughs> That's why I keep all about it. If anything, I'm just criticizing Byron Scott because they've been shooting more three-pointers. I don't like that. That's not how you do basketball, okay? Uh, let's see, what other questions? About? Will the Warriors six-peat from Matthew Isle? Six-peat, and you know what? They're going to do it this year. That's what <laughs> Start celebrating early. 
<laughs> keep those questions coming. Let's let's keep them fairly realistic. I want his his ridiculous. <laughs> the questions don't need. Hey, to be can ridiculous. we bring? Can we bring Radio Ethan back for another segment? My goodness. It's fine by me. I'm a very busy right. man, but you know what, Tom? For you, I'll do it. Okay. Number one. Oh, in, number one in this market, folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something. Uh, uh, we've got a. Okay. Uh, we're being on marks interrupted by baseball, but still, hey, hey, we're building. What's Matthew Bow. Matthew Bow wants to know um, really important basketball question: Which Manning brother has a bigger head, Peyton or Eli? <laughs> Come on, it's obviously Peyton Manning, and really, he shouldn't. Because Eli has more Super Bowls. So how about you downsize that head, buddy? How about you do that? Uh, okay. Payot wants to know, thoughts on Anthony Davis's cold start. Remember, Kevin Pelton wrote the other day that his MVP campaign is in serious jeopardy based on the first five games of the season. Hey, congratulations, basketball world. Way to anoint a guy who can't create his own shots. Way to do that. It's great. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. You nerds out in the analytics community, you thought that you could outsmart the fact that a superstar must create his own shot. Well, congratulations. Here's your MVP. He can't win a game. Quick, quick note on that. Um, I, I, I was telling some buddies of mine that Anthony Davis was going to be like a top MVP candidate. And now one of my buddies just trolls me after every single game. He's like adding me on Instagram and NBA video of the guy getting blocked and falling on the floor. And it's bad. He's making us hey, all friend. Welcome to the house of Strauss. Best <laughs> man the and, and that argument that Ethan oh, just made about him not creating his own shot. That's, that's the exact same argument he was making. It's not an argument. It's a fact. Ethan, Ethan, last Sunday I had the, the, the opportunity to call the Andrew Schultz versus Jay Williams one-on-one -on -one game, a game that Jay Williams lost. Now, albeit he spotted him six points in a game of seven, but he still lost the game. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? A, a comedian beating a... A guy who lost his entire career thought he could win a game. Oh, oh, that's man. interesting. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Radio Evil, ladies. Radio oh, Evil, ladies and gentlemen. Yo, we should do this every, every you week. Ask we ask the question. Just... You ask the question. We, we'll the end every maybe, week. Mean, if you don't want the truth, maybe ask somebody else. Because that's all I'm going to get you. <laughs> hey, uh, should Clay Thompson retire? <laughs> Let's give it a week. Let's, let, let's give it a week. Let's see if you can keep clinging to that coattail from Steph Curry if you can hold on for another week. We'll give him a week. We'll give him a week, and we'll see if he's still in the league, and at that point, we'll render another judgment. I'll tell you what. I do not like it. You are not a splash brother. You may be a splash cousin, maybe a second cousin, maybe a, maybe a dead relative at this point, Clay. Step it up. Wait, but didn't you just – did you just bury Anthony Davis after four games? I didn't bury him. He buried himself, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> that, that Harper says, should Riley Curry be allowed in press conferences? No, no. The NBA is only for grown-ups. This is serious. This is sports. This is where we find out who the biggest men in the profession are. It's not where we watch a cute little girl waddle around and make us smile. I'm sorry. It's not People Magazine. OK, we need to find out why you took the shot, when you took the shot and why you're not stepping it up. And we want you to step it up. It's no time for little girls. OK, I'm sorry if you don't like that. I know it might be unpopular. I know you might say, oh, Ethan's so mean. He's so mean to Riley. Look, look, that's just a fact. Sports are for men and they're for grown men. And that's the only people who are allowed in the show. Uh, there, there's been criticism of you saying that you're very <clears throat> intolerant, you're politically incorrect with some of your views. But what do you have to say about people who think those things? Hey, how about they grow up? Maybe they shouldn't be allowed in these press conferences either if they can't take the truth. Look, look, I don't like political, uh, political correctness. I can't even say it, apparently. <laughs> it's not really in my vocabulary, people. It's not because it gets in the way. And when you're trying to get <clears throat> part of the matter, you can't worry about these sorts of diversions and sensitivities. Maybe you should go cry about it over there with Doc Rivers if it, if it hurts your feelings so much. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um... 
the Grizzlies aren't happy because uh, the Clippers Twitter account posted the losing score against Golden State followed by the hashtag. Hashtag didn't lose by 50. Courtney Lee, when asked about it, said, it's childish. We took our L and we kept moving it, right? We lost by 50. We didn't cry over it. And we went on to the next one. Your thoughts, Ethan? Yeah, yeah. Maybe you should be more embarrassed about losing by 50 than crying about some employee of the Clippers Twitter account. Grizzlies, Tony Allen. How about you hit a jumper? How about you do that? How about you do that when you got humiliated and you were guarded by Andrew Bogut? How about that becomes the primary focus and you spend all that time talking to media and, and complaining about the Clipper account? How about you spend it perfecting your jumper because it was embarrassing? Oh, oh, you kept your you took your L and you kept it moving? You kept it moving on the way to 50 points and he got smacked by the Blazers, who I don't even think can legally drink. I don't even know if anyone on the Portland Trail Blazers <laughs> is a grown adult and they absolutely undress you. You've lost by 99 points in your last three losses that should be your primary focus not what some social media account manager might be saying about you because trust me trust me brother trust me i could be saying a lot worse and don't you tempt me don't you do it i think i think on that note let's let's call it a day thank you to our special guest radio ethan give him a round of applause that was incredible hopefully we can get him back radio ethan are you gonna be available next week the internet's going. I'm out, people. If the internet's bad, look, I'm uh, a rider of my contract. Only good internet. Only the best for Strauss. We'll try I, little Bird just told me you are running on the uh, Trump ticket. You're going to be announced tomorrow night at uh, Saturday Night Live. Can you can you uh, confirm those rumors? I can confirm them emphatically. Vote for me if you want the country to be perfect. That's all I got to say. I'm out. <laughs>